You're listening to Give Yourself Some Leeway with me, your host, Eugene Lee. I've spent the last four years trying to discover how to break the burnout cycle. And as a high achiever in a fast paced world, it's very easy to slip into the old habits that leave you feeling overwhelmed and left behind. And if you're anything like me, then you need to hear this. It's not your fault. Each episode is dedicated to breaking the stigma around mental health in the workplace, ending burnout culture for good, and the action steps that you can take today to do your part towards personal growth and success. And I'm so happy that you are here today. I get asked every now and again about when I burnt out why i did some things they were like what were you thinking why where was your head at when you made that decision and often they asked as as well as something that really annoyed me it was like well, why didn't you just practice practice mindfulness mindfulness is a great cure to burnout and it really annoyed me at first because i was in a place where i was so physically mentally and emotionally exhausted that i could barely process my own thoughts let the mind make key decisions and it it came to me that burnout actually affects the way your brain works and if you dive a little deeper there are the, the two factors that contribute to that are the fact that you have this chronic state of stress and all that stress causes inflammation on the brain and of course that's going to have some structural changes to neural pathways and how you process information and also the sleep disturbances if you're not sleeping properly that's also going to affect how you make decisions so that's what i want to cover today is the how burnout can actually have an effect on your brain so first of all when you're in a state of chronic stress this can cause an enlargement of the amygdala the amygdala is the part of your brain that controls your emotions and your emotional reactions so this can leave you in a state where your mood is affected and you feel sad or you can feel hopeless and numb you can feel empty next the part of your brain that controls memory and attention is weakened when you're in a, when you're in a chronic state of stress this place you feel you can't concentrate if you if you can't process your thoughts or your your memory is a bit scattered and you keep forgetting things this can be so aggravating as well I, this really annoyed me at first because i started losing things and i never lose things it was something so th- simple I, I lost a pair of headphones and it annoyed me so much and people were like oh you'll get over it you know you'll find another you'll get a new pair of headphones but it was attached to my identity so much that i was never the kind of person to lose my things that in the space of a few weeks i'd lost my headphones and i'd lost my house key and i was like i don't lose things i don't lose things and it was that identity of not losing things that i knew that something something was not right another thing is that burnout makes your prefrontal cortex thinner and this is the center of decision making in your brain and processing information so this can really have a negative impact on your problem solving skills and all of these take a massive impact on how you show up at work it affects your productivity if you feel like you can't rem- you can't process information you can't make key decisions if you feel that you can't concentrate on something for too long or you keep forgetting your to-do list or tasks that you need to get done by the day or something that again losing your house key or losing your headphones can be just as aggravating and then on top of that feeling hopeless numb 
not being able to process your emotions. This has such a massive impact. People don't take a step back to realize that burnout and chronic stress can actually have a structural change on your brain. It can affect all of these key regions in your brain. And long term, if you if you don't address these, these sleep disturbances and this inflammation and altered brain connectivity, the neural pathways that are affected by stress, this can have long term effects. It can also lead to mental disorders. So how can you help to improve your brain health when it comes to burnout recovery? First and foremost, I started prioritizing sleep. I was always the kind of person, especially being a high achiever, that I was like, okay, I can get five, six hours sleep and I can I can operate from there. I can start early in the morning. I was, again, going to the gym before work, working a 12 to 14 hour day and then trying to get more things done in the evening and saying like, okay, once I get to bed for about 10, 11 p.m., that's that's enough for me or maybe 9 p.m if i want to have a 3 a.m start and that was crazy even even to when i recovered from from burnout sometimes i tried to normalize that behavior too because i was like look i can catch up and sleep in the weekend prioritizing sleep is the key behavior to recovering from burnout recovering from stress reducing inflammation so especially consistent sleep if you can establish a consistent sleep schedule and having a wind down time where you prepare yourself to go to sleep to reduce your stress levels not have racing thoughts going to bed and fall into a deeper sleep that's one of the key ways that you can improve your brain health because when you're fatigued it actually has the same effect on you as being under the influence of alcohol. They say this as well, you know, when you're driving, they say that tiredness kills, that if you drive when you're tired, that you have the cognitive ability of someone who's uh, over the limit for alcohol. So if, if you're working when you're fatigued, when you're tired, how can you make key decisions? It would be the same as turning up to work half drunk. Another thing when it comes to your brain health is prioritizing nutrition. If you feed your brain snack foods, unhealthy foods, highly processed uh, foods, in air quotes, um, we'll get into that another day, but if that's the only nutrition your brain gets, of course your brain is going to feel groggy and foggy and full of sugar and full of these highly processed oils and fats. If you start feeding it all the right vitamins and nutrition and vegetables and high quality foods and supplements that it it, it craves, especially omega-3 fatty acids, maybe eat some fish, eat some salmon, maybe once or twice a week and getting the antioxidants it needs to help detox all your all, all these different pathways and, and metabolic pathways in your body. If you can think more clearly, and again, your gut is your second brain. Taking care of your gut is one of the best ways to support your brain health. So if you think about what are healthy food choices I can make in order to make better key decisions in my life, because when you have that mental clarity, it makes such a difference. I don't, I don't know why I'm whispering, but it does. Maybe it's just for effect, but it makes such a difference to your mental health when you start eating more clean foods and not rushing after that sugary snack that will boost your dopamine just for an instant, only to come down the sugar crash 20 minutes later. <clears throat> Managing your stress with regular physical activity or maybe just getting out and being social and establishing that social connection, reigniting that social connection that you may have cut off when you felt burnt out, when you felt that 
you were hopelessly numb and you couldn't relate to anyone you just didn't want to communicate opening those lines of communication can help to give you that sense of belonging and emotional support that you crave that you desire that maybe you cut off because you were too busy with work having those social connections is crucial for your mental well-being and that's something that especially in men that men don't reach out and be more vulnerable with their friends about what they're going through their workload their responsibilities what's holding them back when they feel overwhelmed they feel that they need to support everyone around them that they that they can't show that vulnerability and weakness if anything showing that vulnerability and weakness means that no one else can hold it against you and looking for that support that you need only makes you stronger so for anyone listening if there is if you feel that there's no emotional connection or no no one that you can reach out to for support you can always reach out to me for a message and just you know say look this is how i'm feeling and just completely unfiltered completely straight up with you let's have a chat if you feel that you have no one to talk to you feel overwhelmed and on the verge of burnout you can always reach out to someone i'm just a message away creativity is also one area that people don't really have the time to invest when they're so busy with work if you don't have a creative outlet you're constantly being bombarded with work with family life with responsibilities with expectations and setting long-term visions and goals for the future for your professional life but you have no creative outlet be it art music sport be it gaming be it some hobby knitting crochet baking these creative outlets give your give your brain a time to unwind and relax and go into this default mode if you've been stuck let's say with writer's block or you're stuck trying to solve a problem staring at a blank page isn't going to help you overcome that but if you can mindfully get let's say go into a flow state in a different activity be that for me it's baking sometimes when i get stressed out at work i'm like no i need to do some baking and that will get me into this flow state and somewhere at the end of it i'm like you know what this this makes sense or sometimes it's exercise i might go for a walk i might go to gym and halfway through a session i just get i get the spark and i'm like oh i wasn't even thinking about that but that's a great solution to that problem i write it down giving yourself a chance giving yourself a break to have these hobbies and leisurely activities it gives your brain a chance to process thoughts rather than trying to force them out in the moment and it's no better it's it's, it's a great way for your brain to just to de-stress and reduce inflammation especially physical activity is a great way to help release those endorphins as well all those happy hormones well i really hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you want to dive deeper you can always reach out at give yourself some leeway.com you can reach out on social media there or you can email me at eugene at leeway.ie thank you for listening and until next time Take care.